I think we should talk about the Waverly Street Dance, but I feel like I tell this story all the time. And um, I listened to your first, this is episode three, right? For your podcast. So I listened to your first two podcasts. And I think that it's time for you to tell a story. Uh, I will interject and you know me, I always hijack conversations. And uh, I will, I will tell, I will talk when I need to talk, but I think you should start telling the story about like the foosball table and like our epic matches and everything else. And then we'll get to, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wasn't, this is a totally I'm pour the myself cuff. a drink when you go. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, That's what do I it. Do to you. Okay. Well, and also I don't think my brother is going to listen to this, but um, I just want to quickly say now I'm feeling guilty. Like I'm like, he's default best man. And that's not the case. I love my brother to death and he's a hundred percent my best man. Um, but that being said, he's 11 years younger than me. And so when I look back on our 17 year friendship, it's like when I met you and well, I was 17, 18 years old and we were going through the college years and building like crazy strong friendships and doing immature 17, 18 year old stuff. Ridiculous stuff. At the, at the time, my brother is um, like six years. What was that? Like, yeah, like six, seven years old. So, yep. but today my brother and I have just gotten closer and closer and closer. And I mean, so he's a hundred percent my best man. I don't want it to come across like he was a default by any means, but um, I love you, Jared. Okay, so let's talk about <laughs> the Waverly Street Dance. Um, uh, okay, so the Waverly Street Dance. Yeah. So it's the 3rd of July, and I want to take us back to, I think this is 2007. Does that sound right? Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so 2007. And I am only 20 years old and uh, my best friend Andy Matolka is with me. And what time do you think it was? This is probably like noon, maybe one uh, o'clock. Yeah. Well, well, when you started trying to convince me to go. Oh, yeah. It was morning. Like, yeah. Like it was. You're going to do this. Yeah. yeah. Like it was like a, maybe maybe even morning, like 10, 11 a.m. But yeah. so Andy and I, it's the 3rd of July and. We basically, we get together and I, I don't remember. I always didn't have a car. Like I was just a bum and I couldn't drive. I don't even know if I had a car. So Andy and I are always hanging out. We're best friends. He definitely drove us over to your place. And we have two people that can buy us booze, you and Don. And so like, uh, we're always wanting to hang out with you guys. Now we loved hanging out with both of you, but at the same time, we can't, we, you're the only two people that bought us booze. And so it's like, okay, it's the 4th of July. <laughs> and so we go over to your place in the morning and we probably had booze, but you know what it was like back in the day. It was like, just show up at Nate's and I didn't even ask. I just <laughs> invite myself to all of your booze. And you yeah, probably yeah. had like beer in the fridge and, you had like a little cupboard that had like Smirnoff and maybe like a yeah. bottle of Jack Daniels um, and like probably like a McCormick's vodka. Um, and I would just like open the cupboard and start helping myself. And I remember we like come over to your apartment and you let us in the door and you just like walk, you like open the door and turn around and walk straight back to your bedroom and you're playing uh, online poker. And was like, hey, what are you yep. doing today? And yeah. you're you're telling us how you're gonna go to your cousin Justin's uh, cabin. He's got like a cabin with his family, and he's probably having an event because it's the third of July. And I I don't know if they do that yep. every year, but I I know you've been planning on it for a while, and you'd already told him, and other friends were yeah, going. They to that. they did it. They did it every year for sure. Okay. Um, and so, so Andy a, and I tradition that I will. Well, okay. So Andy and I had heard about this thing called the Waverly Street Dance, and we're we are both, well, we're both single. Technically, I am dating someone, but they are out of town all summer. Like they're gone all. And actually, because I remember that that was the summer they were out of town all all summer. That it was two thousand eight. Um. But anyway, 
So they're they're out of town, and Andy and I want to go to the Waverly Street Dance. We've never heard of it. We don't know what it is, and uh, but we think it's going to be awesome. And I ask you if you'll come with us, and you say no. You're going to Justin's, and we we I think we might end up just like bantering, hanging out for a while. But the whole time I'm trying to convince you to do it, and eventually I say, all right. How about we play a game of foosball? And if I win, you have to come to the Waverly Street Dance. And I yeah. think if you won, you just got like there was nothing. You just weren't going to go to the Waverly Street. Okay, Dance. well, let's you... let's talk about foosball in those days. I mean, the reason. Yeah, you're exactly right. I was only risking not to win um, because that's how <laughs> confident I was. Because in those days, first of all, I don't I think had, I'd I owned ever won. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I owned the foosball table. I taught you how to play. You were decent. And I would just cycle through you, Justin and Andy. I'd like the winner kept the table. So Justin would play, he'd lose. Andy would come up, he'd lose. You'd lose. And I'd just keep doing this all night long. Right. And yeah. No one ever beat me. And you started getting competitive. You started getting a lot, lot better. Um, but you still weren't winning by any means. And you, the thing about foosball is you have to win by two. So if you play a 10 uh, on our board, at least you did. And uh, you have to win by two. So lo and behold, Trev, who really wants me to go to the Waverly Street Dance, been working on me all day long to go to the Waverly Street Dance. He starts competing. He starts being like, he starts making goalie shots that are worth two if they're clean. It's like, what the hell's yeah, going well, on? And, and I mean, but it went, It I remember it vividly. It was, the end score was something like 18 to 16. It was like no one ever gained yeah. a gap. It was just like back and forth. And we and you played a 10, you have to win by two. And lo and behold, Trev won. So I was and I won. Word. Yep. And I did, I won on Go a on. goalie shot. I won on a goalie shot. And we played by yeah. strict rules. So mm -hmm. for, you know, if you, like, let's say you shoot and you accidentally hit any other player on the table, then it doesn't, doesn't count. count. Or if you shoot and it goes off the side of the table and then ricochets in it, that doesn't count. So it has yep. to be like a controlled, clean shot where the ball touches nothing. And yep. when we first started playing, I mean, you would just dominate us. And you had this move where you would like basically pull the ball and shoot it, or you would kind of like tap it and it would yeah. slide across the table and the next guy would hit it in. And I remember just like, I was okay at defense. Like I did actually, I just felt like my hand eye coordination with the defense was good. And I would always try to do that shot from downtown, not with the goalie, but the second guy. And I'll almost never did it go in, but I actually felt confident doing that. And the reason is because when you're back there with those guys, if the, if you lose it, hopefully you lose it backwards and then it's just you and the goalie like yep. the your opponent's not going to get the ball but if you're trying to practice with the front three and you lose it you've got bad guys on both sides of you so you're going to lose the ball so yep. i just remember though i mean i had literally never won and andy and i <laughs> the what makes it i guess i don't know for anybody listening they might just think okay great trevor won and he'd never won before epic story but what you have to understand is like I desperately wanted you to go to the Waverly Street Dance, and so did or, Andy. And you, and you desperately not, wanted not, to win in foosball for probably like two straight years. You wanted to beat me in yeah. foosball, so there was that well, built up too. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a girlfriend, and I had the guy friends, and we didn't usually hang out together. And so when I would come with Andy and Justin over to your place, it would be one one of us like two of us, I guess, playing foosball and the other two playing NCAA football. And we would just yep. be getting really, really drunk. And so we would, you know, maybe start at like 10 and go till two in the morning and just drink nonstop playing. We would just switch back and forth playing those games. So for probably yep. two years, I lost every single game of foosball we ever played. And but I never yep. really I never like I mean, of course, I didn't like losing. But I didn't say, like, screw it, I'm done for the night. Or I just played and played and played and played. I just kept losing, you know, but I would just play again. I'd be like, play again, let's play again. And um, 
But like Andy and I, it wasn't just so you could buy us booze. Like I remember we weren't 21, but we were like, no matter what, we were going to get booze. We were going to sneak it in or we were going to figure out we were going to go to the street dance without you. And we were going to get booze. We wanted you to go yeah. with us because you were right. like our favorite person. You know, we were like, this is going to be so epic if Nate comes. But it wasn't like and, you know, OK. And I think another thing that's worth bringing up is I less so today. But back then I was a very charismatic and I had a way of being like, come on, come on, like, just yeah, come with can, us. You still are. No, you still are. You can convince and I would, anything. Yeah. I would just get you to I would get people to do stuff like in the beginning of the night. They'd be like, I'm not coming. I'm not going out tonight. And I would just be like, no, come on. We're just going to go. We're going to order pizza. We're going to get some booze. We're going to get all ready. We're going to go out and it's going to be awesome. You know, and um, but I remember thinking, like, there's no way we're going to get Nate to go because this is like the third of July. It's his cousin. It's They're a having a legit yeah. party. It's a tradition. And you'd already like told him you were coming. Yep. So, but I also knew that you were a man of integrity and you would go <laughs> if we made a bet yeah, and I, I won. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I remember just like hitting the winning shot and Andy and I just lose our shit and <laughs> um, like we're just freaking <laughs> out and you're just like, well, it looks like I'm going to the street dance. And uh <laughs> <laughs> and you had to like call Justin and or text him or whatever, and you had to tell him you weren't coming. Um, and the thing is, like, the craziest thing about that is, yeah, that made it epic and everything. Then we go to the street dance, and it just turns into like one of the most epic nights of my entire youth. Like looking back on that night, we like we go and park. And we walk through like the neighborhood of Waverly. And as we're approaching the street dance, I'm just like, feels like Woodstock to me, like looking back on it. And we've gone yeah. so many years since it's like, it's really not that crazy, but well, at one point I it mean, rained on us and like everyone's still dancing in the rain and the band's still yeah. going and then it stopped raining. And then everyone's like kind of drenched and it's like, but we're all still partying. It did have like a Woodstock feel to it. A hundred percent. Yeah. And like, and that was year one. There was, there was always sort of like a country cover band outside and then a rock band inside. And basically it's like this huge parking lot that they turn into a, they set up a band and they set up all these trucks, these like trucks that are selling beer. And then you can go into a bar and they have a live rock band and you can play pool and play Kino in the bar. But, um, I don't know. I just would every time we would go to the street dance, I would kind of get in this mood of like tonight I'm going to do whatever I want and screw tomorrow. And back then, you know, like I didn't have bad hangovers. So it was like, I can do it, whatever I want, you know, but well, I remember like is, is leaving that, that night was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The crazy thing is, is that we have infinite store. We could have done, a podcast series based on just Waverly street dances. Cause that was what started. That was the first night of a long running, running tradition for Trev and I, we would go to the street dance every single third of July for like 10, 12 years straight. I mean, they didn't have it for COVID one year, so we didn't make it that year. And I mean, but realistically we refuse to miss that street dance and we have, some of the most epic stories in that street dance, everything from winning like hundreds of dollars at Kino to walk. One time home we walk from home. Waverly, Nebraska. Yeah. Cause we're like, well, yeah. the theory behind that was like, okay, we know how many cops are out. We don't want to drink and drive. Obviously no one wants a DUI. We don't. That, have this isn't how I drive. remember it. That's not how I remember oh, it. It is. It is. No. And then, and, but we were, we were like, we we're like, what will happen will be a cop will see us because there's so many cops between Lincoln and Waverly tonight. They'll, they'll stop and be like, why are you guys walking down the highway? We'll be like, well, cause we've been drinking and we want to be responsible. And they'll be like, Oh, well that's no. Awesome. Okay. We'll right I have to say that entire <laughs> night. Okay. So that entire night, I remember thinking Nate's going to have like a drink or two or three, 
but we're going to be here for four hours and he's going to be good to drive home. And then it's 2 a.m. and we're walking towards the way of the car. And instead of like taking a right and going to the neighborhoods, you just like look to the left and you're like, I'm too drunk to drive. So it looks like we're walking. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like 12 so miles. Just No, it was longer than that. Probably. It was like 15. It like, was like, yeah, 12 to, or 15 just house. back yeah. to Lincoln. Yeah, just to Lincoln. Yeah. I remember so it do. took us like we walked down we walked down the highway to Lincoln, Nebraska from a different town. It took us like four <laughs> hours. We get to the yeah. we get to a gas station in Lincoln at like <laughs> six AM and we asked that random guy if he could give us yeah. a ride and he says yes, which is super sketch. I don't know why he did. Yeah. And no, then either. we go to get in his car and it's like packed to the brim, like he's just moving to town. Yeah. Yep, I mean, we're yep. the back seat is literally full to the ceiling, and we are. I'm sitting on your lap in the passenger side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the guy could have had an easy out. Like, sorry guys, I just moved here, and my car is literally full to the ceiling. I can't fit you. But instead, he's like, "Yeah, let's let's do it." But he wasn't even goofy. He it wasn't like he could get away with being like a super cool hipster, and it was like a great story for him. He just seemed like a like very shy, timid guy. And we just like probably rolled up and we're like, hey, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're like down the huge. Highway. Yeah, we're huge <laughs> present. We have big presences, you know, at 6 a.m. We're like, yeah. we probably seemed pretty desperate. Like, could you please give us a ride? Because we've oh, been we walking were. since two. In the, yeah. But yeah. anyway. Yeah. So we, we had like. That was that was one of the crazier uh, Waverly Street Dance Third of July uh, times we had, but we had we had a lot of different crazy stuff that happened over those years for sure. Yeah, man, I I don't know. I just remember I would always win at Kino. I would always put like fifty bucks on something, and it would pay like five to one, and I'd keep hitting it. <laughs> like it makes it no just, sense. Like, Your random luck. Yeah. You are Nate. Nate always gets a, the parking spot right in front of the wherever we're going. And it's like literally every time. And it's yeah, just, it's, it's like just really games. creepy. Yeah. Places where there's <laughs> no always, parking ever. Yeah. Someone always is leaving as I'm right behind them. <laughs> yeah. That's, and you're like, I'm oh, known oh. for my ability to park. But also you're, you just are lucky. Like you just win at gambling scenarios. We'll go to the casinos and I'll bring like 80 bucks and I'll be like, Oh, only play with what you can afford to lose. So I only bring 80 bucks. And I, a lot of times I lose it. Sometimes I come out with 80, but if I'm going to win, I'm only going to win like $40. You are playing, you were like fine spending $400. You know, you're betting twenty dollars a hand whereas i'm betting five dollars a hand and you're like ah let's just double it forty dollars a hand and that's how you win i think like you're you're willing to bet <laughs> I, more, I guess yeah and then, I, yeah. And then i'm just like okay i'm done that's a problem yeah. everyone keeps going i always just stopped when i start getting far enough ahead 